Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to be giving you a review of the Pro Colored L1800 DTF printer and the oven that comes along with it. This is not a plug and play device. I will put that out there right now. There is a little bit of prep work that you have to do on your computer in order to set this up and get it to work, but don't worry because I'm going to show you how to find the instructions on how to do that. So here is the printer as it arrived at my house. I did have to help the driver to unload it. It weighs a little bit over 80 pounds, but I really didn't have a problem myself getting it in the house. I'm sure I gave my neighbors quite a show doing that. But once I got it in, I opened it up. And as you can see, it is very well packaged. All of this foam packed in there. Everything was together. Nothing was broken. So it arrived in really good shape. So now let's take it apart. And we're going to look at everything. There's this little box that comes in there. These are swabs that you're going to use to clean it. Here's your USB cord and a whole bunch of other things. You have some syringes here. I'm going to show you how to use that in a second. This here is the bracket that you put on top of the printer to hold your film. Here's the flash drive with all the instructions and the dongle. You have to have both of these plugged into your USB port when you're starting to set this up. Yes, you are going to need a computer or a laptop, what have you, that runs Windows. Okay. You're also, to set it up, you're going to need three available USB slots. All right. This little cup here on the back with the tube in it, you need to leave that in place because that is what is going to catch all the excess junk ink that it spits out. This is sort of equivalent to the waste tanks on sublimation printers. So this needs to stay in place. This black compartment on the side of the printer, that holds all of the ink tanks. As you can see, they are very clearly marked with stickers that tell you what color they are. Cyan, magenta, black, yellow, and white. And yes, the white has more tubing than the rest of them. The machine needs to be left on so it can cycle the white ink around and around. It helps sediment from building in the bottom. But anyway, you will take your ink, which is liquid ink. It's not a cartridge or anything. It comes in bottles like this. And then you just pour it into the corresponding container. And then make sure that you place the lid back on your little jugs here very securely so that it doesn't spill. Once you have all of that in place, let, let's cut this tag off right here. We'll get that tag out of the way. Next, we're going to start drawing up the ink so that it can be pulled through the tubing. Use the syringe and attach the little orange nozzle to the end. Now these little car, I'm going to call them cartridges, okay? These little cartridges over here, you're going to pull those out one by one. Please be very careful. And you see it is also marked with the color that it is and this little port. Put the syringe into the port and then very gently pull back on that. And as you can see here, the ink is going to start flowing. There it comes. And you want to keep drawing that ink up until it fills up that whole little plastic bubble that is on the side of this cartridge here. Be careful doing this. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it at all. Now, as you can see, the ink is going to start flowing in and you want it to completely fill in the little plastic bubble. If you get air bubbles in there, don't worry about it. When you do your print head check and your head flushing, this is all going to clear itself out when you first turn the machine on and start running it. But I'm just going to sit here and let you watch this just for a second. I just think it's so cool how the ink just pulls itself up through the tubing. And you want to do this for every single color. Now for the white, you're going to have two of these little cartridges that you have to do that for. Okay? So don't be surprised when you pull them out and you're like, hey, there's two white ones. It's okay. That's fine. That's what it has. So we're just going to keep pulling the ink out. And all of your excess ink, you're going to squirt it into this container here. Now, this is not the same container from the back of the machine. This is a separate container that they send with it just for the purpose of helping you to clean it out. Now, this is water-soluble ink, so I just dumped it in the toilet and then I rinsed it out. Like I said, it's water-soluble. Don't worry about it. And now we're going to pull up this next color here. This is the black. This is so cool. Just watch it come through the tubing there. Yeehaw! There we go. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do this for all of the colors. I'm going to speed up this part of the video here just so that you can see the ink flow through but not take up a whole lot of time.
The next step is to go into the back of the machine with the syringe and this is the tube that I was telling you about where all the excess waste ink is going to come. So put the nozzle in there and then you want to draw it back enough until you see the ink starting to come out. That's going to start to get it flowing. Put that down into the top of your little cup there and then replace that in the back of the printer. Don't just leave it setting out. Put it in the back that's going to hold it in place. This thing here, this is what is going to hold your print as it comes out of the machine. The part that's rolling there has a very sharp blade on the underside of it. You're going to roll that back and forth and that cuts your film. We're going to attach this to the printer by taking those little hooks there, putting it straight into the slots on either side, and then press it down just a little bit. See, there's the blade. It just rolls back and forth. These here, these are brackets that are going to go on top of the printer and that is going to hold your roll of film. Let's take this out of the bag here and here both of those brackets are those little wheels there are going to hold the spindle that goes through the roll of plastic so that can roll back and forth there are four screws here yes i'm wearing two shirts here you can see my sleeve because it's cold in here take those screws out all four of them and then you're going to take each bracket and you're going to place them on top of those holes and the bar is going to go between them okay you see how it fits down right in there and it just rotates back and forth so make sure that you have those screwed into the top pretty tightly. Make sure they're snug. Those two holes there and then that longer piece goes into the back of the printer and then replace the screws. You have two of these black plastic caps. One of them goes into the end of your film like so. See right there. There's a the bottom. Just pop it down into the film like so. Press it down. And then the other one, you can see there's a little screw in there. You're going to have to loosen that screw so that you can fit the rod through there, tighten the screw up, and then run it through your film. Now, there is the whole setup. Yes, I'm in a different area of my house. There's the oven, and there's the printer side by side. This takes up a lot of space. Now, the actual setting up of the program and to connect the printer to the computer is sort of like a lengthy process. You have to set up all the software, all of the drivers, and then you do have to create a new folder on your computer to copy the contents of the flash drive onto your computer so that you can reference it later. The flash drive will tell you how to do all of this. Okay, there's tutorials on there that walks you through all of it. So I'm not going to show all of that. Just know that you can find all of that on the drive. This here is a lengthy process, but you need to take that white flash drive, put it into a USB slot on your computer. You also need to plug in the blue one, that's the dongle, and also take the cord, plug it into the back of the printer, and plug that into a USB port as well. You're going to download the RIP software. This is the interface here, and I know <laughs> for some reason my computer was not screen recording, so I just had to film the screen so there's all those weird lines. And then you just upload your images, my kid wanted this on his shirt and on his pants, so that's what I did. You turn the actual machine on with a large switch on the back, but you also need to press that power button over there to the left, and this is your thermostat here. Please make sure to pay close attention to all of the instructions that's in that flash drive. It will walk you through all of this. Now we're just going to print this. You press the rip button there and then come down. If you're using words or whatnot, make sure down here that you see that to the left. It says mirror print. Just make sure you have that checked right there and then just hit the print button. Meanwhile, let's get our powder ready. So this is the DTF transfer powder. You're going to put that into a container. I just have a small like plastic shoe box available. So that's what I'm using. So I'll put my powder in there. And then once my transfer was done printing, you see how the white is printed on the back. That is what's going to give us this nice, bright, vibrant image. I just took the powder and sprinkled over it. You have to make sure that the powder completely covers your image. So I'm just going to pour some on here with this spoon and then shake it off and then put some more on the rest of the image and shake it off. Now we need to bake it. We're going to put our transfer over here into the little oven that came with it. So I just placed it in there and then you're going to turn it on. Everything is set for you. Wait for it to heat up. Then you're going to hit the power button and the timer will start counting down. Once the timer is done, an alarm will go off. And as you can see here, the back looks very plasticky. So that's all ready to be placed onto your shirt. So this is in my heat press here. This is just this blue shirt that I got from Walmart. I've already pressed the shirt so it's nice and flat and wrinkle free. Put my image on it and then I'm going to cover it with a piece of fleece and a piece of parchment paper. Then I'm going to press it. It was like 45 seconds at 360 degrees. Let that cool down. 
and then just gently peel it away and look at that nice, bright, vibrant image. This is so different from sublimation. With sublimation, you have to be careful which materials you use, you know, with the polyester content and the lightness of the actual item. And with this, you don't have to worry about it because it prints that bright white backing onto the back of it. So you get vibrant images even on dark clothing, which is awesome. Look at that. That is really nice. Okay, so I'm back in my craft room. I've been using this machine, like I said in the beginning, I've been using this machine for quite a while now. I don't like to use something just for a little bit if it's, you know, something that's going to cost you a lot of money. I don't like to just use something and say, oh yeah, this is wonderful, you should go get it. I like to test things out first. So, this is just a pair of pants for one of my, one of my littles. He loves Dr. Robotnik. So I had put this image on a blue shirt. He's currently wearing it because it's now his favorite thing and he's hyper fixated on it and he doesn't want to take it off and I'm not ready to fight that battle today. But anyway, this is on the leg of a pair of sweatpants. Now I have been, this is right on the seam. That's why this is kind of bumpy looking. It has nothing to do with the image. This is the seam of the pants, okay? The outer seam. So I have put this through some rigorous washing and drying test. And I would say that this pair has probably been washed and dried about five times, five or six times. And I just throw it in the washing machine, you know, normal cycle, cool water. I always wash my clothes in cool water. And then with the dryer, it's not on high heat, but it's sort of like, you know, one of, the, one of those mid ranges. Okay. It has held up very, very well. I'm very happy with it. Now, any shirt. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, something that I make myself or something store-bought. I always wash it inside out. I find that gives you a little bit more longevity. But with as rough as my kid plays outside, and he's been wearing these pants, um, rough and tumble kid here, and I'm putting it through, you know, several wash cycles. I'm very happy with how it's holding up. Like I said, that's just the seam of the pants there. Also, my raggedy jacket here. <laughs> I'm using my, my jacket that I wear like outside and like to work in the yard, do stuff like that. Um, so like as a guinea pig for the images that I did not put a white backing on. Now listen, because I put this on a dark object, I printed it with a white backing and of course, you know, the, the color. But for this, I just use black. Because why use up all your white ink if you don't have to? This is a light garment with black images on it, so I did not put the white background. So let's straighten this sleeve out here. I was trying to witchy up some of my jackets and t-shirts, and I'm very happy with how it came out. This has also been through the same, you know, washing and drying several times, and I'm very happy with it. I was worried about some of these little fine lines here, but they haven't peeled off. Nothing has come off, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I've got this here, and where's one of the pockets? Give me a pocket! Where's one of the pockets? This is one of the pockets. I put this on the other pocket as well. Hold on. Heaven forbid, Amber. See? That's on my pockets. So I'm very happy with that. Overall, I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, I've been using it every day since I got the thing. Took me a couple days before I got it set up, but that was personal reasons. It had nothing to do with how difficult it was to set it up. Now, I'm going to say this here, just like I said at the beginning of the video. Um, oh, there's a little bit that came off right there. But like I said, I've been wearing this outside, doing stuff in the yard. This is not like a garment they would just put on and go to the store. This, this thing has been getting some use, okay? And this is very fine line here. Actually, the artwork, some of this is kind of like a little spotty line. It's not a solid line, so that's just the design that I picked. Um, yeah, not it, it's not a plug-and-play type deal. It's not something you just plug in and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to use it. You do need to have a little bit of computer know-how. But I went over that during the video. So, and I don't want to put it out there and make it seem like that this is something that's going to be easy to just plug in. You do need to have a little bit of computer know-how to get everything up and running. But once it was set up, I've not had any problems out of it. I've not had any problems out of the machine at all. It prints just as well now as when I've got it and I've been running it pretty heavily. So um, I'm very happy with it. So I would say, yes, this is something that I definitely would recommend. I'm gonna have some links down for you. 
in the description box if you would check those links out and if you would give this video a thumbs up click subscribe check me out on other forms of social media the links to all of which will be in the description box down below and i'll see y'all next time bye